Fort Meade Marines began the Marine Corps birthday celebration with a run this morning. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Tom Rickard received a special invitation to join in. All right, Marines, one, two, three. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. It's the 241st birthday for the Corps that dates back to 1775. Happy birthday, Marines. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, highlights from the Army-Navy game, new disabled veteran leave policy, and leisure travel has new hours. These stories and more, but first, the holiday season is upon us. If you're expecting holiday visitors this year, why not start the procedure to get them post access today? You can go to the Fort Meade website, click on the post access icon at the bottom of the page, click printable VCC forms, then select the installation access request form. Forms are also available at the Vehicle Control Center at the Reese Road gate. Bring the completed form along with your ID to the VCC. You can submit a request form if you're a military member or spouse, a family member over the age of 18, a government employee with a CAC card, or a permanent automated installation entry badge holder. For more information, contact the Vehicle Control Center. In other news, Fort Meade's Director of Public Works held a meeting this week to discuss the procedures for snow removal this winter. Most of the meeting's discussion centered on priority areas for snow removal. Briefly, there are three priority levels, with priority one areas being maintained continuously during a snow event, secondary areas are supposed to be cleared within six hours, and priority three areas are within 12. Category one areas are usually reserved for units that have critical 24-hour operations. Other topics discussed include distribution of salt and shovels. Beginning November 17th, DPW will issue each building a shovel and salt shakers to help keep entryways clear. Notifications on base status during snow events was also discussed. And while a lot of coordination goes into determining post status during a storm, following our website, Facebook, and Twitter pages is still the quickest way to get the information. For more information, just go to the Fort Meade website at www.ftmead.army.mil. In MWR news, starting this Saturday, November 12th, Leisure Travel Services is changing over to winter hours. They'll be open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So really, the only change is that Leisure Travel won't be open on Saturdays until early spring. Leisure Travel is located at 6530 York Avenue. That's just across the street from Club Mead. In sports news, in this week's annual Fort Meade Army-Navy flag football game, the Navy broke the Army's two-year win streak with a dominant victory, 25 to eight. It was an entertaining contest with lots of big plays. Here are some highlights. Navy opened the scoring with a touchdown pass seven minutes into the game. They added another touchdown that was set up by a 50-yard interception return. A spectacular catch caught the Army on the board and a two-point conversion made the score 12-8. But that's all the scoring Army would muster. Navy continued to roll, scoring twice more for a final of 25-8. The trophy presentation was made by Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Tom Rickard, Command Sergeant Major Rodwell Forbes, and Poe, the Ravens' ever-present mascot. The first thing we want to do is present the, uh, the winning trophy, uh, the Commander's Cup trophy, uh, unfortunately to the Navy who did an awesome job. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Job well done. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. We can keep this for a while, y'all. Yeah. In other news, the Wounded Warriors Federal Leave Act signed by the President last November went into effect this week. Basically, the new policy gives newly hired disabled veterans in the federal government immediate access to 13 days or 104 hours of paid leave. The idea being that these new employees would not have to take unpaid leave to get treatment for service-related injuries. There are, of course, limitations and rules governing the new policy. The Office of Personnel Management released a 90-minute video that will hopefully answer any questions. Here's a brief excerpt. My name is Doris Rippey. On behalf of Brenda Roberts, Deputy Associate Director of Pay and Leave here at the Office of Personnel Management, I'm pleased to open this webcast and introduce our speakers. Today's presentation will provide detailed information on the new disabled veteran leave category. So under, under law, there is a single 12-month eligibility period during which uh, a veteran can use this disabled veteran leave benefit. So one time in their career, um, there's a single first day of employment that triggers the beginning of that 12-month period. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.